This is the Sports Dynasty Podcast. I'm Trevor, and this is Juan. Before we get started, you know what to do. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We're on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play Radio, Stitcher Play Radio, at Podcast Dynasty on Twitter. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Type in Sports Dynasty Podcast. You'll see us right there. Be a part of the conversation. And weekly pickups. Yes, and we can, yes. Also, we can pick up. Also, shout out to Taylor Rue Piper. He's been a guest on our show before. Packer fan from um yeah yeah he's a Packer fan. Yes, Packer fan. He, oh, he about to start his yes, business. Yes, he won this week's pickums um by a tiebreaker. It was a very very interesting battle between a four way tie at the end of the at the, at the um end of the um show of the Cowboy game, and he won because of he had the most points combined. So. Good job. Damn, you have to calculate every score for the one. Damn. Yeah. Dedication. I res- respect, yes, man. Yes, respect. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. So, Taylor won that one. And he is now on the top of tie for top for first in our contest. It's heating up now. So, so good job. I just know I suck. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, make sure you guys um put in your picks in the uh, comment section of our group. Um, uh, It will close Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can... Um, comment your picks in the comment section, or if you want to message me directly, you can. But make sure you do it before 6 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. That or you're screwed. Or you're screwed, yes. Yes, exactly. Other than that, let's get started. Yes. So, it's a common thread in a lot of media, especially today. It is Tuesday right now, recording. I honestly wish we weren't recording on Tuesdays when it comes to week pick comes, but I mean, I know, I know. scheduling, Sch- what scheduling, can we do? Yeah. Like, next week's going to be worse. I, you might not see this face next week. Like, it's, it's insane. Yeah, so Yeah, schedule is horrible, but we're going to make it work and make sure you have your content. Exactly. We always make it work. Of course. What's Sports Dynasty is about? Goddamn right. Well, anyway, we are going to talk about rookie quarterbacks because that is the wave nowadays. And I, it's going to lead me into something that I want to destroy, but it's going to be later. Don't y'all love when I destroy things? I do that a lot here. But let's talk about all five of the first round because it's more more quarterbacks are were are picked than are playing, you know, like the one in Houston, for example. Uh we're gonna talk about the first rounders only. The ones that I guess the ones that matter. Start, dare I say. No disrespect to Davis Mills. Oh yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I guess you're right, yeah. Yeah, or but <clears throat> yeah, we'll talk about those. So let's start with the first one, you know, the ones actually picked. Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville. The purpose of this exercise is to explain why all of them are struggling because they're all struggling. Or one of them is not playing, but there's a reason why he's not playing. So, yeah, yeah because I think that's a perfect unanimous opinion that all mm-hmm. of them... I'm keep it real. They all suck. Let's, let's keep it real. Yeah, they're, they're all bad. They are not living up to the first round QB status that we're accustomed to seeing. Sometimes. As of late. As of late, yes. As, as of, of late, late, yes. In the last... Let's say five or six years, yes, not living up as the lead. Let's start off with, yeah, Trevor yeah, Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. Now, Trevor Lawrence has, obviously, a national champion from Clemson, number one overall pick, which no one was surprised that he was the number one pick. Um, He's in Jacksonville. He has a new they, – they pretty much clean house and started all over now. They have a new coaching staff. You have Urban Meyer, who's his first time in the NFL. You know, legendary – Yes, um – Legendary college f- football coach, um, yeah, and he hasn't really. You can tell, like I said, he's. You can see that there's promise there. You can see that there's promise there, but it, he's pretty much going off on immediate raw talent. You can tell a lot of raw talent there. It's something there, but just like trying to clean up certain mistakes that's happening in games. You know, trying not to do too much, but then it's like you. It's not really a learning curve because your coach. Is literally a rookie as well, so it's like it's not really something that you can really um fall back on. And say, all right, fine, let's let's see what I can do to you know. Unless he has the veteran, the veterans on his team. But other than that, there's nobody on the team that really help him succeed. Honestly, to be perfectly honest, you want the stats? Yeah, go ahead. He's throwing for fifty four point two completion percentage. That's terrible. That's beyond terrible. Not even Cam Newton sort of went that low. Uh, six hundred sixty nine yards. <laughs> Five touchdowns uh-huh. and seven interceptions. I think two or three of those have been big sixes. Yes, they were. Yeah. Yeah, that's really bad. That's really bad, yeah. Um, yeah like, like, like Trevor was saying, when you're with a coach like Urban Meyer who also don't know what the hell they're doing, 
that is a basic recipe for failure basic recipe for failure the thing is that like you say you also say he's going by raw talent right you see the throws there are throws that you're just like ooh very very nice throw yeah dang is there and then you see throws like the pick six from the pick six from the flea flicker and it's like oh or week one against Houston when you're just like oh you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's 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 the reactions you're gonna get, and overthrows, ducks is like the, the whole team itself is a mess, and it really reflects on him. And then he has I don't even know who's the backup because supposed to be Minshew, but he traded him for for God knows what reason. He would have been a decent backup, a decent veteran to be with. Yeah. Him. He's been in the league for about two or three years now. That's enough. You know what I mean? He has no one around him to really... He has won down there. He has won some games down there. He can win some games, but... And that's a good question. Who the hell is the backup in Jacksonville behind Trevor Lawrence? I don't know, dude. I don't know either. That's what I'm uh, saying. Please let us know, because we don't know. I don't want to look it up, because... I'm not going to. I don't care about that. Who cares about that? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's... Again, it's a lot of a learning curve. It's like, what do you do from here? And then it's like, it also goes back to... Let us be honest. The Jacksonville Jaguars' uh, front office is dysfunctional. It's been dysfunctional for, for a while. For what, a maybe, I don't know, almost 50. It's like 13, 12, 13 years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very dysfunctional. At least since 2010. Mind you, is the same franchise that was just like one win away from a Super Bowl. From a Super Bowl appearance. And now look how far that has gone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fluke. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, it's a, it's a fluke. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it. It's a fluke. But um, it's like, again, we, we spoke about this before in the guide. They're not sure in which direction they want to go. It's like everyone is there. It's kind of like, all right, fine. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put all the items I want on a table, and we're just gonna figure it out. And it's, think of it as a jigsaw puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle I've never seen before. Everything's all scattered up. Okay, fine. I'm gonna sit here and figure this out. And That's I'm, excellent, excellent. I, I may put a, a, a piece here, and hey, it doesn't fit. Oh, let's try it again. But at a certain point, at a certain point, you gotta tell yourself what. Uh, our approach is not working. We need to find something to do. Find something different to do. And I honestly speaking, it's like with all the um, business um, um, ventures that the front office is going through, they're not sure they want to be a wrestling company like, hey, e or a records company or football. Like, you got to fix something. And it's, it's it's not really looking good right now. Um, I get, yeah, I want to, I get trying to like sell tickets. I know that Urban Meyer is a familiar face in that area, you know. Playing um, Florida. in Florida, which is not that far from Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I get it, but it's like the fans want to see a winning product. You know, you pretty much teased your fan base with that one 2017 run, and they're thinking that, oh, we have something here. No, you don't. No. No idea. But that's just me. You, obviously, you agree with that too. So, yeah. Yes. Next, Zach Wilson. You want to see his, hear his stats? Yes. All right. 55% completion, mm-hmm. 628 yards, two touchdowns, mm-hmm. week one, seven interceptions. And you want a great one? He's been sacked 15 times already in three weeks. So that's literally five per game. If they continue this stat, he's on pace to get sacked 85 times at this rate. That's a first of all, fifteen sacks in three games is abysmal. That's terrible. He's also scored twenty points in the last three games. I just want to put that out there too. Okay, so the offense is terrible, basically. Mm-hmm. Now, for this situation right here, as far as Zach Wilson is concerned, and it may not be him per se personally because he also has a first year head coach. Mm-hmm. I mean, the difference is this head, this his head coach Robert Sala has been the for the coordinator when he's been at before, so he has. Has NFL experience. Yes. So that's good. The problem is with them is not per se like him because I still because obviously Sam Donald has showed us that it's the, you have to look at the front office. Now Joe Douglas, the GM for the Jets, um pr- was pretty much inherited Sam Donald from the from Mike McCagnan from the yeah. previous regime. So we get so a lot of um the New York media pretty much gave him a a, a pass the first year or so because you know those were his guys so he had a couple of drafts to bring in to bring in to fix the offensive line because the offensive line was abysmal and it still is it still is um 
they did all they could to build around to try to make a, a run um a running ground and pound team. Um, you know, run the ball a lot, you know, in the deep in the trenches. You know, you know, something that could at least you're not asking your quarterback for too much. But the problem is we don't give him pieces like the pieces that he needs, he's gonna fail. He's gonna fail. And the offense, especially for the offense this year, for the Jets so far has been horrible. You only have one lineman from my name, Mackay Beck then. That's yeah. it. Yeah, besides that, yeah, but again, let's go about go back to drafting. Drafting and building now now there's no excuse for you, um, Joe Douglas. Now this, this this the team you have now, this is your team now. The team that you could is yours now. You can't say, oh, it's from the previous. No, this is yours now. Now, since you are co- that's your your general managing for the New York media, for the New York metropolitan area, the Jets. You know what I'm saying? The Jeff fan the fan base is starting to run out of patience already. And I, I wouldn't say it's fair for Zach Wilson, but at the same time, he's not playing well either. It's like he looks very, very stuck. It looks like he feels very, 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 very confused a lot of times. A lot of a lot of the interceptions, like a lot of the interceptions he's thrown were. Wow, what are you what are you throwing at? What are you throwing at? It was really bad, and you know. So it's a little bit of both. Maybe he maybe he, he needs to play better, but at the same time, the foundation around him is tainted because it's dysfunction all around. You know, so, so it, it really doesn't matter what head coach you put there or what GM. There's, there's always this dysfunction in the front office. Until then, they'll never succeed. So I kind of feel bad for Zach Wilson to a certain extent because he's he's put in a situation where. He's doomed to fail. Look at Sam Darnold. Doomed to fail. Letting he's in Carolina playing much better. His confidence is back there. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Like I said, I live in New York, so I watch the games there here too. Just to, just to see what I'm walking around there. Which here. But I, I, I but that's that's what I see, at least. Well, no, we're moving on. Because there's a thread that, that's gonna be connected. Okay, that's cool. when I'll start talking. Okay, cool. Uh, so Trey Lance doesn't play, so who cares? There's a reason why he doesn't play. Now, who's next? Justin Fields. I'm gonna save him for last. Let's go to Mac Jones. Stat line for Mac Jones: 67 percent completion. That's very inflated because they don't let him throw past three yards. Mm-hmm. Seven hundred, yeah, seven hundred and thirty-seven yards and two touchdowns. Two, just three. Oh, he didn't throw picks for the last game. I didn't realize that. Whoops. So three interceptions. So he's two for two and three. Ah, uh, that's impressive. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm impressed with the fact that I thought he'd do more than three interceptions. Me too. I could have sworn he do more than three. And he's been sacked six times. Trevor Lawrence was sacked four times for uh, just for you so say I know. Part of that, a lot of the part of the sacks that is it really bad that Justin Fields almost got more than everybody else in one game, nine to sixteen. That is. It took. I'm mean, 15, 15 for three games, nine for one. <laughs> anyway, got <laughs> Mac Jones. Matt Jones. Matt Jones. Uh, well, for the for the sack um um part of it, yeah, uh, him being sacked six times, I could say at least three of them were sacks because he held the ball too long. And even though our offensive line is not very good, it's very inflated, very overrated to say the least. When he when he does have a clean a clean pocket. A lot of times he try to find a final read and he can't find the one he's looking for. It's not registering fast enough. He just gets sacked. He takes the sack. Or instead, you just throw the ball away. But he takes the sack, which is dumb because the offense can barely move as is. Why would you hurt the offense by taking the sack? Just throw the ball away. If only Jimmy did that last game, maybe they wouldn't have lost to the Packers. Yeah, well, no, that's me. <laughs> that's me. I just want to say that. That's funny. I mean, and also, like Juan said, it doesn't help. It doesn't help that um he's throwing only. Check down passes every single draft. It doesn't help. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah. McDaniels. I already said what I have to say about McDaniels in the last episode. So, I mean, there's no point to be repeating the same thing I'm going to tell you again. But the point. No, for the last three years. Yeah, for that. Yeah, there's no point in saying it again. But, um, yeah, it's this promise there. You can see this promise. There's some throws that he that he makes. I'm like, okay, that's what we're looking at. That's what we're looking at. And I know that maybe the structure of how. He played in college. How the structure of the, of the locker room is very similar to how he played in college than he is now. So I think he's comfortable as far as the environment he's in. I just feel that they need to, you know, open up the playbook a little bit more. Just you know, because it's it's, it's, it's talent is there. It's there. It's there. It just he needs to um, trust himself. Because like I said, you're playing in New England. Let's be honest. You're playing in New England. Big shoes to fill. Two years ago, the greatest quarterback of all time was literally under center. 
in the same stadium that you're in. So I can imagine the pressure. The, the pressure's there. I can imagine. I just I feel that he just needs to relax and just breathe in, breathe out, and be Matt Jones. Don't try to be someone else because you're not. You know, don't don't try to try too hard. Just be yourself. That's just me how I see it, though. But what about you? He's the least talented out of everybody else, right? But he was the one that was most ready to play out of everybody else. And you can see that. Mm-hmm. He actually isn't, like, sticking to one read only and then gets destroyed all the time. He actually does about half the time he actually is going through progressions. And then tries to get to it. And, and I won't lie, about maybe 30% of the time, the skill position players fail him. John Smith. So, <laughs> so it's not all of his fault. He is definitely the best out of all the rookie quarterbacks. But the thing is so low. The bar is so low. Yeah, the bar is so low. Who cares? It doesn't make a difference. Go to Justin Fields. There's not, I don't, what was his stats? How much he threw for for like 47 yards? 69 yards. It was 69 yards and only one, one counts? One net your passing yard. Yeah. Nine sacks. How many picks you do? I don't remember. Who cares? It doesn't make a difference. The stats don't matter. Yeah. Justin Fields. Now, Justin Fields. Nine sacks. <laughs> I'm, if this is more of me personally believing that the, um, his coaching staff failed him. That's, no, that's 100%. That's, it, his it coaching is. staff failed him. My question for, and this is why Ryan, um, they both should be fired, Ryan Pace and um, um, Matt Nagy should be fired immediately. If not immediately, they're not, there's no way they're going to last, they're going to finish the season. There's no way they're going to be able to, next year they're done. They're not going to come in. Yeah, they will, 2022, they will not be they will not be. They will not game. be there. How do you not, first of all, when the term deer in the headlights is not even what, it, it, it doesn't fathom how bad it was. Justin Fields looked like he did not. Justin Fields did not know what he was doing. He looked like he was confused. It was like trying to make something out of nothing. This is not college where you could just make something out of nothing. This is the NFL, and also I bet you the league isn't so as slow as you think it is, huh? I think. <laughs> oh, I forgot he said yeah, that. Yeah, the league isn't as slow as you think it is, isn't it, huh? But no, back to Matt Nagy. You had an entire off season to give him a game plan. So whenever the inevitable of him um getting in on the field, you have something he can have something down pat, learn down pat, whatever. So he can at least show like he belongs in the league. You literally threw him under the bus. It's terrible. So now what do you do here? What do you do here? Because now he's in the game. You were you you were pretty much well, he I tell you personally he's not ready. He would have benefited That's a fact, do to me, you personally. He Ben, he would have benefited sitting out for the year. Now, I know Chicago and the Chicago fans talking about, oh, Justin Fields is the savior. He needs to start. Now you see why he didn't, he wasn't able to start. Now you see why. But then again, it goes back to the coach. It goes back to front office. And this is also a underlining thing, too. But except for New England. New England is is, is different. It's on a, they're on, they held to a different standard as far as front office is concerned. They held to a different standard. Oh, maybe I don't have to speak at all. Because you're about to hit exactly what I want to talk about. Yeah. A different standard, but terrible front offices. Yeah, you see the trend. Yeah, terrible front offices that we have here, and it continues to get worse. And honestly, there's, there's no signs of it getting better. Honestly, no, Not, no signs of getting better because now, now they do him out there. Who knows what type of, what type of confidence he may have lost, or or he sees a he says, damn, I really ready for this thing. Are we really ready for it? That that's damaging. People talk about all oh, the football player man up, get over it. No, that's not how that no, works. That's not how it works. They're human. They're, They're human. human at the end of the day. It's not how that works. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be very very difficult to get them back on track. Now it's now you say, Oh yeah, Nick Foles, uh, uh Justin Fields and Addy Dalton, Andy Dalton who's in consideration for start on the start. You don't have you don't have a game plan. You don't even know who's your starting quarterback. And you mean to tell me that that's not uh, 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 something that could really hurt the development of a, of a of a quarterback. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. She, we've been saying Ryan Page should be burnt in a stake in Chicago for the last two freaking podcasts now. The two uh, seasons we did uh, the show. He he is the catalyst as to the suffering that the Chicago Bears franchise has been suffering for the past three years. It's because of him and almost solely because of him. Because Maggie still made the playoffs with this team two out of three seasons. Some 
how mm-hmm. with a garbage piece of trash quarterback they called Trubisky who's backup at best. He still made it. So there is some type of coaching genie, not genius. Well, let me not put that word out. A uh, type of coaching, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He somehow knows what he's doing. Like, As to the most part. He knows what he's doing for the most part. Not all the yeah, time. There's a word I'm trying to, I don't know why it's not popping in my head right now because I'm tired as crap. But there's a word I'm trying to put out. But he, he knows for the most part, There's he, he knows football somewhat. So... I don't want to, there's no way that he doesn't get blamed for this because it's almost to the point where it looked like he made him look like that on purpose. purpose yeah. Like it really, that's how bad Sunday was. And there's a help that you have a 48 year old Jason Peters single trying to single block Miles Garrett. <laughs> he tried. He really tried. Did he? It looked like he no, did. That's how bad listen, it was. He, but that's not, but yeah, I'm not blaming him though. Yeah. Why, first of all, I don't know why he's still in the NFL. Again, he's he's like forty seriously, and he looked like he put on more. He looked like he's four hundred and fifty pounds. He looks fat as hell. I don't know why he's in the NFL. And you have him on an island with arguably the best edge rusher in the league. Really, and that's not his fault. That's the coaching's fault. Are y'all are are y'all slow? Are you special ed? What is that? Are you serious? So how the hell was that kid supposed to succeed with a situation like that? Couldn't Mind you, he gets no. He doesn't even get no blame because he again. We I said in the last episode, he will look one way, some and the other side is wide open, but he does not go through progression. He just throws to the other to the cover guy regardless. So that's on him too because he needs to have some type of common sense. Oh, there's two corners on him. Maybe I shouldn't throw there. Maybe I should go somewhere else. He he half the time he didn't do that. So yeah, that's on him. He tried to play hero ball like a dumb like a dumb ass, and he paid for it. But where's the guidance? There's no guidance. Where's the coaching? Where's the help they're getting on? So that's why. To me, it seems yeah. like Matt Nagy is, is at the point where he says he knows this is the end of the road for him. So he's saying, screw it. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, he's pulling Adam Gates. That happens. Yeah, he's pulling. Yeah, yes, Adam, Adam, Gates. <laughs> Adam Gates. So the common thread for these three quarterbacks, because Mac Jones is not in a bad front office, not in a great one either, because anybody who's been listening to this podcast for the last few years knows how we all feel about GM Bill. So he his front office is... Top 15, not top 10, top 15. So he, he's in a way better situation than three out of the four uh, quarterbacks. Trey Lyons is in, I can argue he's in the best situation, to be honest. And they're doing what everybody else should be doing, getting set. Um, the other three, however, are in the worst situations. And it's almost by far even worse than Detroit. At least Detroit has a competent coach. So, like, dude, like... It's so bad. Trevor Lawrence on a, is on a team who hasn't been good like since 1997. <laughs> like, let's keep it real. They, like, <laughs> the Jets hasn't been good since like Bill Parcells was there. Like in the nineties. Like <laughs> Chicago hasn't had a good quarterback ever. Ever. So it's like that's that was the reason why people were rushing him in so quick because they were like, oh my God, we have somebody with talent. That's why they were so eager to rush him in. And they forget the fact that, you know, in order for someone to be good, they have to get nourished. And they didn't nourish him. And now look at him now. Never. So, yeah. So, that's the... So, your expectation, Chicago fans, is the reason why you feel the way you feel today. You should have been using your brain and actually listen to the coach for once. The coach was actually competent and said, let him sit. Instead of, oh, we need to play now. Oh, he's playing now. Oh, he's playing now. Instead of actually looking at the preseason games and looking how unready he was. It was very obvious in the preseason that he wasn't ready to play. Very obvious. But y'all saw him running around and making plays against eight stringers, and you thought that he was good. Yeah. So that's your your reason why you feel bad is your fault. Mm -hmm. 100%. Don't blame nobody else but you. It's your fault that you feel this way about Justin Fields now. It's your fault. Leave leave the kid alone. Let him learn because he needs to learn. He needs to learn NFL 101. Got to let him take that course, and now he look like crap. But it's another reason why. And I like the spoiling point that I made because we've all been spoiled in the last few seasons. We've had some pretty good quarterback classes the last few seasons mm-hmm. that a decent amount of them actually delivered. Mm-hmm. For example, Kyler Murray. Rookie of the year 2019. He was excellent as a rookie in, in 2019. And it continues to get better and better every year. Exactly right. Joe Burrow was amazing until, you know, his knee ripped because Cincinnati's horrific. 
he was amazing. Justin Herbert, after what week two was, took the league by storm. You know what I mean? Uh, Lamar, he sat for about what half the season, two thousand eighteen, mm-hmm. was pretty good, not throwing wise, but he was very dynamic, pretty decent. Baker Mayfield was good. You know what I mean? Josh Allen wasn't, but hey, growing pains, right? Those are the those are the small instances where growing pains actually built someone into being what they are today. To add on with what you just said, mm-hmm. the teams that they played, though, those former teams play for, what are they what do they all have in common? Even Baltimore too, Baltimore too. What do Baltimore is like New England in the sense where they the best situation is the front office is stable, where it's the stable off stable um a stable um front office. Yeah, yeah, outside where, of Cleveland. Outside, outside of Cleveland. Um, this is before now. To my, uh, to, yeah, now they are. Yeah, but but yeah, when but, he was drafted, yeah, yeah, Cleveland was terrible. The rest yeah. of them, um had a terrible really ran franchises, terribly ran franchise fran, fran front offices, who who now can seem like hey we got something here and we got some, and they finally hit something. Yeah, because even Arizona's looking all right in the front office. It, actually, it, yeah, yeah, and Arizona's front office before Kyler Murray was awful. Yeah, as Josh Rosen. Yeah, so. We're not saying that it's not possible for the quarterbacks we mentioned for this year's draft to turn it around. Again, it's just very difficult because it's very difficult because there's no guidance whatsoever. And it's like the certain situation where some people need some people need, need to get out of their own way. Yeah, a hundred percent, perfectly you said. Get, out, get out your own way. How about going the Mahomes route? Yeah. How about going the Rogers route? How about going the Brady route? Brady half for a year. I don't know if y'all remember that. It was a long time ago. I know people were babies yeah. probably listening to this. I don't know. But he sat for you behind Drew Bledsoe, a veteran. Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes sat behind Alex Smith, a veteran. Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre for multiple years, veteran. You know, there's examples that, and more often than not, the dude sits, learns, and they're ready to go. I think that happens more often than you rushing him in and him getting destroyed. And that fails way more often. We want a great example of this. I think a perfect one. Vince Young. Mm-hmm. Coming out of college in Texas, he was hyped up as all crap. He went to a team who not only was a bit dysfunctional, his head coach did not like him. He didn't want him drafted at all. But they were because the front office and the ownership had to get in the way and make him play, he was doomed from the start. Yeah, Dwayne was. Haskins is similar to this too. Uh, they didn't want him, but Snyder wanted him, and he was doomed from the start. You could argue RG three as well. You could argue RG three as well. That didn't want him. They didn't want um, that Shanahan didn't want him, but Snyder wanted. It. It's, it's unfortunate, hence why Washington is where they are right now, still dysfunctional and With quarterback list. Quarterback list, yes. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's it go either way. It's. It, at a certain point, I mentioned before, like, look, look at Detroit. Detroit's been garbage forever. Literally forever, yeah. Forever. They find a coach, Dan Campbell, who I feel personally, before, the coach they had before, except for Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell was good, too. I feel I said, you know what? They may have they may have struck gold. Miami, too. Miami, too. Miami had, was terrible. Had a tough time finding a coach that fits, you know, that could really find a culture there. And they got one in Brian Flores. I don't know how they feel about him now. I still think that's the coach you need. You know what I'm saying? At a spot of time, the front office get out of their own way and let just let things happen. Let the people that you hire do their jobs and don't get in their damn way. Yeah. Owners. Like, that's the recipe for success. You do realize that every successful franchise as of late, that's what they do. Robert Kraft don't get in the way. No. No, the Roonies don't get in the way. Right, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they don't get in the way. Right? The, I, I don't know who the owners of Baltimore. They don't get in the way either. Baltimore. Isn't that Rooney? No, Baltimore. That's not Baltimore. That's not, it's not Rooney? Ro- Art Rooney in them? It's the Steelers. Oh, I'm bugging. My bad. Right. Steelers fans are going to beat me up. Look, oh. I don't know the names of these rich people. I don't care about them. They mean nothing to me. Even crap, I don't really care about that much. I care about the players and the coaches. I just think about that. Who am I thinking about? Because they were... Art thing, the one passed away. Art model. Thank you. That's what I'm thinking of. When they won the Super Bowl, they had the art uh, patch. Yeah, yeah art model. Yes. Thank you. That's what I'm thinking of. People are gonna be like, "You dumbass." Oh well, whatever. Ain't my first time for me trying to stupid on our own show. Yeah. But, <laughs> it's all good though. Yeah, but yeah, the Baltimore. Yeah, the 49ers too, because they used to be. Oh my God, they were horrific, but they stopped. 
Mm-hmm. Just say like, Lynch, you got it. All right, and now look, they're a great franchise because they got out of the way. They let Shanahan do their thing. I'm saying the, the Packers too. They don't really get in the way. They let you do you, whatever. That's how you let us see because the owners don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know football. They just they're just making money off of it. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Let the people that they hire do their thing, and if you trust them so much, you will succeed. That's how successful franchises work. You know, the ones that don't work are the ones that, you know, get in the way. Cowboys are getting away. I don't want to hear it. You talk about you talk about what's his face all you want. Uh Jerry Jerry. Um when's the last time they were they were relevant? <laughs> I was three years old. They're relevant today because we make them relevant. The media makes them relevant. That's how I, I, I go that way. Yeah. That's nothing right. to do with playing with with, success you know, because yeah. they had no success, no success since I was three years old. Like, no. Stop it. But franchises like that don't succeed. No, the Washington. Dan Snyder swear he's a football savant. And that's why they've been hot garbage forever. Since 1991 or 90. I forget which year they won. 90, 91. Yeah. That's just how it is, man. It's just, I just want to go over that because most of the media is not going to talk about this. But that's how it is. That's why these rookies are struggling. It's because they were overhyped from the beginning because of ya, because of your expectations. And then they were drafted to disgusting franchises. That's usually what happens when you're picked high. That's why sometimes like, why you want to be a top pick for? You know you're going to a franchise who is absolutely disgusting, right? Mm-hmm. Unless you luck out like Trey Lance to go to a good one. Yeah. You know, but more than likely you're going to a dysfunctional franchise that's going to ruin you. So I don't know why people want to be half drafted high so much. I don't get it. I never do. Like, you're not going to tell me my money because if you succeed for five years in a good franchise, you're going to get paid. <laughs> so you pay regardless. So. Yeah, like I don't understand it. But uh, that's what it is. Let's go with the uh, week four picks. Get this done so... You can get out of here and enjoy your week. Uh, I won't talk about this game ever, but we're going to have to. Uh, the Jaguars versus the Bengals. Barracks. Uh, Bengals are favored 7.5 and, and the over and under is 46. I expect the Cincinnati Bengals to win this game, cover, and what's the over under? 46. I, I'm going to go with under 46. They'll cover the point spread. And I expect Joe Burrow to have a big game. If he's your, if he has been in your fantasy, start him because Jaguars defense is terrible. And they come up a short week, and they're home. They're home. The short. I always say, the um, the short week benefits the home team. Me personally, they're at Bengals. I know. I know they're Bengals. Yeah. So I'm saying Joe Burrow will, you know. Well, they both have a short week though. Yeah. They play at the same time, so it doesn't matter. I'm I'm, I'm I'm going with, I'm going with Cincinnati to win this game. Yeah, I want Cincinnati too. I don't know what they're gonna cover though. It's Thursday. Things happen on Thursdays. You know, like the Giants scoring almost 30 points. Which, like that they, which they'll probably never do again. That's what I'm the saying. That's what I'm saying. Thursdays is, is insane. So I don't know what they're going to cover. I feel like it's going to be sloppy and closer than it should be, but Bengals are going to win this game. I agree 100%. Okay. Browns at Minnesota. Browns are favored by two and a half. And the Vikings, no, and the over and under is 52. The Vikings have been a lot better than I said, uh, offensively at least. Offense has been booming. Guess what happens when you put more than two receivers in the field, right? Because <laughs> they usually didn't do that. I'm going to Cleveland in this game. Um, I was wondering if Minnesota's offensive line can stop, you know, Miles Garrett, and he's pretty hot right now. I'm going to assume that they're not going to be um, Ed like the Bears and actually put two people to block him this time. I mean, one can hope. One can hope. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. But um, I do think that Cleveland will – I mean – they should, be able to, they should be able to rush the quarterback, honestly speaking. Rush the quarterback. Um, Cleveland's uh, secondary is a little iffy to me, a little bit. Um, they are susceptible to big plays, especially with Thielen and Jefferson. But um, I think they should be able to contain them as much as they can. I'm going to go with Cleveland. This is a hard one because Cleveland has not been looking good all season outside of the outside of three quarters against Kansas City. Uh, the Vikings are starting to get real hot on mm. offense. Like, Kirk yeah. Cousins is really playing really, really well. It could be a product of desperation from last week, though, because they were 0-2, they were 0-3. But that offense has really been cooking. I This is Tuesday. We don't know if Dalvin Cook's coming back or not. That's That means something, even though um, Madison is amazing. He absolutely obliterated that bum-ass Seattle defense. And this defense is not that much better than Seattle's, though. Um, offensively for the Browns, we need to know if Jarvis Landry's coming back because he really is their chain mover out of everybody else. And without him, they miss him. And it showed last week too against the Bears. 
uh, this is so hard. Cleveland's the safe pick, and I'm gonna go with it. But I got a gut feeling Minnesota has a really big chance of taking this game. But I'm gonna play safe. I'm gonna go Cleveland too. Um, I guess they'll cover because two and a half for Cleveland. But over and under 52, 52. I'm gonna go on a limb. I'm gonna go on a limb and say over. Maybe by like a point. Maybe it's like 28, 23, 28, 25, or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I'll go with that. Uh, overrated Chiefs are going to Philly. Uh, they're favored by seven, the Chiefs. And the over and under is 54 and a half. This is tough according to the over and under because of what we saw last night. Which we were supposed to talk about that. Oops, my bad. I forgot. It's all right. It ended in like a quarter. That was beat the hell out of Philly. So, yeah. This is tough. It's going to be tough because both defenses are garbage. Yes. Both of them are really bad. Um, so if you like this high scoring offense that everyone seems to love, you're gonna like this game, all right. Oh, by the way, when I mean tough, I mean like the over and under. Chiefs are going to win this game. Yes, that's Chiefs clear. Will, will win this game. You know but, yeah, we'll win, yeah, Chiefs gonna win this game. No, the, it's it, obvious. It, the over or under You're maybe. not gonna tell me in this lifetime that this team, especially against this Philly team, they're going to lose three straight. No. Patrick Mahomes is gonna light them up. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Three straight. There's no English three straight. If they lose three straight, there's gonna be an emergency pod of me laughing, me going crazy, and me pressing the panic button in the light. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I just like being right because they, they just released a bad football team. Oh my god, this mother trucking dog. Um I don't know. That Philly offense was so bad yesterday. I have no idea. Like, they're going to score some points, but it's like, dude, you're not going to tell me Dallas is world beating on defense. <laughs> like, seriously? They, they, they're, nah. not, they, they're not world beating on defense, actually. They, I mean, yeah, Michael Parsons is a monster, and, you know, they can the front seven is pretty good, but that secondary is very susceptible, which they did give up a lot of big play yet last night. But the point is, no, nah, there's no way that the Chiefs are going to lose to this bum-ass Eagles team. I'm sorry. No, no not there's happening. No, no it's I not agree. happening. Colts at Dolphins. Dolphins are favored by two, and the over and under is 43. I'm picking Indianapolis to win this game. I'll tell you why. I know Indianapolis is beating to all hell, all hell like that, but I think the defense constructed right now, or if on the field, will find a way to get to Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett and pretty much decimate that offensive line, Miami's offensive line. I want Miami, no, I'm sorry, I want Indianapolis to win this game. I just, the Raiders had a bag. The Raiders look like they're back to normal, but they ended up getting the win anyway. But I, I didn't like how um the Raiders looked, especially in that fourth quarter against Miami, literally allowing allowing them to make it a game. No, I'm sorry, I can't do that. We can't do that. I'm going to go Indianapolis to really say, nah, we're going to come there and get a first win. This is a tough game because it can go one of two ways. Indianapolis has a nice front seven while um the call uh, the Miami offensive line is absolutely disgusting, right? It's awful. Jacoby Brissett does find a way to get the ball out though, and if there is a chance that they're able to block for just a second, Fuller and Waddle's gonna have a field day on a defense like this. Because this this secondary has been awful. Like seriously. So it's gonna be hard for that to be stopped if they don't get a pass run. So that so Quiddy Pay and Doris Bugner and them have to get to Jacoby Brissett or this is going to be a long day for you. On the other side, however, uh, the line of the coast has been actually pretty bad, too, even with injuries. The interior hasn't been good. And Quinn Nelson has been caught it off, and we don't have an update yet, so I don't know what's going to happen there. So without him, this Miami defense can do some serious work. So I, the under is smelling really good at 43. Um, Miami secondary is wonderful, and there is no real pass catchers on this Indianapolis team. So the more we think about it, if Jonathan Taylor does not get going in this game, because we haven't seen any of those running backs do anything because his line has been so bad. So if Jonathan Taylor does get going, I don't know how they score. So I'm going to risk it. I'm going to pick Miami in this game in a really, really defensive game, like maybe 20 to 14 or something like that in this okay. game. I'm going to go with Miami. Probably wrong, but I'm going to Miami. I don't really care. My nephew's trying to come in this door right now. All right. Giants. At Saints, Saints are favored by eight. The over and under is 43. I'm going with New Orleans to win this game. The Giants literally, despite 
They also fuck because they ain't beat them. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> you swing scored 14 points against the Falcons defense. Like, Daniel Jones has done everything you asked him to do the last two games. Everything he asked him to do, he did. You know, not to not do he make stupid mistakes, just find ways to put the the team in position to win. And he's done that. Fortunately, everybody else not. No, not not so much. I'm gonna go with New Orleans, New Orleans Saints, just because also also that secondary Giants secondary is really bad. And um despite them having no real receivers on the team, expect them to get open. So I'm gonna go James have a field day, and New Orleans wins this game. Yeah, New Orleans is going to win this game. I agree 100%. Uh, I like the under in this game, too, especially how the defense in New Orleans has been playing. Are we getting, like, four-year-old disturbances on the side? That's why I keep looking. Um, <laughs> uh, especially how the Saints defense played last week. I wonder if they can replicate something like that. This will be... I guess three out of four times if they succeed this week that the defense has been lights out. I don't know. There's life. The Giants can't do anything on offense. They can't do any, like let's keep it real. Especially Stonewall Barkley. Like he, he's washed up. There's no way he's gonna he's gonna be able to go on this against Cameron Jordan and company either. It's gonna be a problem. I don't see how the Giants score any points. I like the under in this. I like the Saints covering too. I like eight. Eight should mm-hmm. be enough. Yes. Lines of Bears. Bears are for some reason favored by two and a half, and the over and under is 41 and a half. I know you're waiting. I don't know why he's not being restrained, but whatever. I'm going to go on the limb here. The Detroit Lions win their first game. Detroit wins if, this. If Justin Feud is playing, I, that's not a limb to me. No, no, no. I'm talking about they're going to win regardless. Ooh. Detroit Ooh. is going to win this game. I love how hard they've played, how they've played. Despite being down by 30 points in the first game against San Francisco, they fought their way back into it. I like how they fight. I love how they fight for their coach. They play for their coach. In the last three games, they have fought and played for their coach. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, things happen. You lose, don't lose. But I think they're due for one. Chicago is bad. And I don't mean good. They're bad. They're, they're not good. They don't know who the quarterback is. You know what I'm saying? They don't know. And this... I think this Detroit defense front seven could actually get to whoever's going to be the quarterback. Who has the quarterback is, you're going to have a long day, personally speaking, because that offensive line is really, really bad. And they owe him one, and they're going to bite some kneecaps off. Detroit wins the cover. I agree. You said it before me. This is why I should talk first sometimes. Uh, Detroit, especially after last week, giving it to Baltimore the way they did. And they've never been out of ever, any game outside of the second half against Green Bay. But it's Aaron Rodgers. What the hell do they expect? So I really believe that the way they play, as tough in the trenches as they are, especially if they make Fields go out there again, there's going to be cakewalk if he's out there again. If Andy Dalton's there, Andy Dalton is going to play on a bad knee. And then Nick Foles is garbage. So that this is going to be a longer season for Chicago than I thought. This is going to be really, really bad. Detroit, their front impressed me a lot. Even though Baltimore's offensive line isn't all that good, but Chicago's is worse. So, <laughs> Detroit got it. Jared Goff is going to do some good things there. This, this, yo, I, I'm I'm kind of scared for people who live in Chicago, man. This is going to be bad. They they might be in contention for number one pick, depending on what happens with like, Jackson's room, though. It's going to be bad. You know, you know how you know we smell the dysfunction? Like Robin, you know, smell it strong. Oh, you know it's gonna. I know, be bad. I know Chicago. I know the Chicago. I know the ownership is gonna be pissed if they lose at home to Detroit, which is bad enough. But Detroit is on the up. Yeah, and it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. So Panthers are Cowboys. Cowboys are favored by four and a half, and the over and under is fifty point five. I like Dallas in this one. Me too. I like Dallas. Um, Carolina for the most part. It's impressive how th- they're three and zero right now, but I don't see kind of as impressive. But I don't see the level of difficulty, and that's in, why it's not impressive. In, in that three game, it's it's not really there. But hey, Jets, good. Saints with no coaching and half their secondary gone, and uh, not even Tyra Taylor. That's not impressive. Yeah, I can argue if this is just as bad or worse than Denver's three wins. No, I, I'm only saying <laughs> you know I'm only I mean? saying impressive if you are on the outside looking in. You know the three and zero. You know, hey, Sam Donald's three and zero. He has more wins in three games than he ever had with the Jets. 
which is says saying a lot. I mean, that's not true, but that's hilarious though. Yeah, was, I, I know I'm probably exaggerating, but yeah, it's pretty pretty bad. But I'm um, yeah, I'm gonna go with the Dallas. Dallas looks really good right now. The offensively, they're clicking. Um, yeah, the pick is Philly, but you can see something there. That okay, fine. Wait, wait till they get fully healthy. They're gonna be an issue, a massive issue. So I'm going with Dallas to win this game. I like Dallas in this game too. Uh, Carolina's finally gonna get hit in the mouth, and they're gonna see what problems they really have, which I think is good for them. Now they know really what to work on. They're not playing against complete garbage anymore. Um, if they're as good as they have portrayed in the last three weeks, it's actually going to be a big close game, and they're going to be under that 50 and a half because that Carolina defense is fast and do get to their spots. So if if they resemble anything in the last three weeks, this is going to be a close defensive game. But something tells me it's not going to happen. Texans at Bills. Let's be quick. Texans of uh, Texans. Why are they there? Uh, Bills are favored by 16, and the over and under is 48. I'm going to assume there's another Davis Mills game, so can we just pick Bills and come move on? Buffalo by 1,000. Cool. This is going to be fast, too. Titans at Jets. The Titans are favored by 8, and uh, over and under is 45 and a half. So Tex- Titans are going to win this game. I don't know if they're going to cover, but they're going to win this game. Can we move on? Yes. Beautiful. I wonder if this is a, counts as a tank bowl. It's probably too early to count as a tank bowl. Uh, Washington at Falcons. The Washington is for some reason favored by one and a half. And the over and under is 47 and a half. I kind of like the over in this game, to be honest. I'm going to pick Washington just because. Reluctantly, aren't you? Reluctantly, just because they have a front seven that can slow down Matt Ryan. That's literally yeah. It. I'm going with that too. That's literally it. Is it? Is it? But if if they can't get to him, he's gonna throw the ball and maybe because he actually kind of sucked. So it beats on them. I don't know, but I'm reluctantly going with Washington just by that alone. Yeah, I'm going with Washington too. Moving on. Yeah, Cardinals at Rams. Ooh, got some good ones now. This is tough. Uh, Rams are fair by four and a half, and the over and under is fifty four and a half. I'm going with the Rams to win the game. If I'm not mistaken, historically, the last few years, McVay has completely obliterated the Cardinals team every time he played. Yes. Yes. I don't know if they're going to obliterate them, but they're going to, to win, win this yes. game. Yes. Especially how sporadic and, you know, Cliff Kingsbury-like this team has been. They've been up and Even though they've won all their games, they've been up and down in those games. Like, they shouldn't have beaten up Jacksonville by one billion. Let's keep it real. And yeah. if the defense was as good as the it's supposed to be in paper, Minnesota wouldn't have diced them the F up to the point where a missed kick is the reason why they are three now. Rams are legit. Yeah, the Rams the are best legit. team in the NFL right now. Yeah. It's it's legit. Like they, there's not many holes and they do the right things that is needed game by game. They actually game plan their way through, especially defensively. They the things you do defensively is that they keep everything in front of them and they tackle so well. You know, Cliff Kingsbury likes to keep things short. But they've been gunning as of late. You can't gun on the Rams. That doesn't work. And then this line is gonna have to deal with Aaron Donald and he usually destroys. He's going to a German suplex Kyler Murray around the place. So yeah, the Rams are I don't want to say easily going to win this game, but they're going to win this game. Four and a half, I think they'll cover that. Yeah, they won at least at least by ten. Yeah, I took over a game. This was cool. Yeah, Seahawks at 49ers. Uh, two teams have just lost. Seahawks. <laughs> uh, 49ers are favored by three. That's interesting. And uh, over and under is fifty one and a half. This is actually a little tough too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Many may say they don't see Seattle losing three games in a row. Why not? I don't know that's what the appeal of people is. They don't see them losing the years in a row. But this defense is terrible. Yeah. It's, all, it's horrible. Which is why I'm going with San Francisco. To, to lose a heartbreaker like that, last week, like a day on Sunday to the Packers, I'm pretty sure if I'm Jimmy, if I'm the, the people, the players in the team, I'm saying, yo, we're, going, we, we're coming back home. I mean, we're home again. We get to host our division rival. And as we say in New York, Let's beat these bum asses. I, I, when I want this, I can't say it. I want to say it, but let's beat these bums. Jesus but, Christ. You know what I'm saying? Let's beat these bums. And I think they're going to beat the hell out of them. It should be a good game because, you know, they always it's always entertaining. It's always a dog fight where they play. We're going with San Fran to win and um, redeem themselves. And the skid for Seattle continues. I'm going to go with Seattle because 
that secondary in San Francisco is so freaking bad to the point where I think Seattle actually might look like a competent offense again and actually will score 30 points. I don't know if the 49ers will be able to score 40 points completely, especially since the up and down play that Garoppolo has been showing, you know, like going backwards and fumbling backwards like a dumbass. So with that said, this is really tough. I don't know. I go over 51. I go over 51. Uh, I like. I don't like Seattle. Like literally, I don't like Seattle. Like that's a bad team. But 49ers has sold me some things that kind of scare me in that Sunday night game. I'm like, Ugh. like they were actually locked up for more than half that game. I didn't like what I saw from them. I didn't like what I was going on against Philadelphia either. And the fact that they made the Lions come back the way they came back, there's a lot of red flags that's came about San Francisco, especially in the back end of this defense. I think uh, I really think that DK is going to show up. I think that T- uh, Tyler Lock is going to show up something big, especially they couldn't do it last week. I don't know why, but they couldn't do it against bum-ass Minnesota. But this is going to be a game, and I think they're going to play really desperate because 1-3 and three is not an option. There is really going to be a big red flag, big what the do we do to fix this type thing? And Russell Wilson is going to start crying. It's going to be a disaster. In Seattle, they go 1-3. and three. So I'm going to go over them to win this game. Both teams will go 2-2 uh, two and two while the Rams be sitting pretty. Ravens at Broncos. The Ravens are not favored. The Broncos are actually favored by one. That's interesting. And uh, the over and under is 44 and a half. The Broncos finally play a decent team. This will be a test for them. Mm-hmm. If they could beat um beat Baltimore, they're like okay now we can take them a little bit seriously now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like how Baltimore played against D- D- Detroit last week. I didn't like how they played. Um, they literally this is, they're likely as better years better than them. Even on injuries, they're like years better than them. Yeah. So the fact that they wasn't able to beat on Detroit like that is telling for me. Remember, um, there's no KG Hamler or Jerry Judy. Mm-hmm. So they lost two of their top receivers. Remember that. I know. I'm still I'm still going to Baltimore anyway. Oh, I was going to pick them too. I was going to yeah. Baltimore anyway. But I'm saying that, you know, if they can manage to beat them without all that, then, like, okay, this is impressive. And, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Baltimore anyway. Yeah, Baltimore. I, I agree. I think Baltimore is going to win this game. I don't know if they're going to be able to stop this Lamar rush attack. Lamar should be 100% healthy this time because he was sick playing. Uh, the thing that scares me, though, about this, even though they're not a throwing team, this uh, this uh, cornerback tandem that the Broncos have is really good. And there are no receivers that are going to challenge them. So it's going to be kind of, not, I don't say simple, but it's going to be easier to keep them in front of you in the Broncos defense. So they actually have a great chance to win this game. It really is going to test how disciplined this defense is. The other side of the ball, without hammering, and Judy now is just Tim Patrick and Courtney Sutton, right? So their receiving core is now normal because it was crazy broken before. Now it was normal. Now, this is going to test because although there's not much talent on this Baltimore side of the football like it usually is, Marlon Humphrey's still a thing, okay? And there's still a decent amount of players in the front seven that can get after you, and they still like to blitz heavy. So we're going to see how Teddy Bridgewater is going to be able to handle the Baltimore blitz packages that used to throw at people. Um, I don't think it's going to handle it very well, to be honest. I think it's finally going to be pressured, and now we're going to see the Teddy Bridge border that we see mostly of last year. I like Baltimore in this game, and I like them. Uh... Mm, do, I like the, do I like the over? No, I'll take the under at 44 and lower. I like that. Two more. This will be quick fast. This won't be fast. Steelers and Packers. Packers favored by six and a half. Over and under is 46. Is it, every time you see Steelers go under because they can't score points. Green Bay wins this game. Yeah, it's easy. They, nah. I don't got to explain much. Roethlisberger needs to get out of the league at this point. He really needs to retire. It's really sad. It's making me sad because he was such a beast a few years ago. For him to go downhill like this is pretty alarming. Now, a great, another good primetime game most likely. And Raiders going to Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers are favorite three and a half. Uh, the over and under is 53. They only had two bad uh, my, my primetime my, game so far. Yeah, my, yeah. Really Two, the Thursday and the Monday. The, the, the things have been being nailed so far in the primetime games. I like it. Let's hopefully it continues. Because yeah, yeah. I'm going with the Chargers, and I'm going to go with the under. I think under. Yeah, I'm going with the under. Um, it's going to be two two decent defenses going at it, mm-hmm. and that's, that's what I like defense. So let's let's see where I go from there. I'm going to go under, and the Chargers win at home by field goal. I like Chargers here too. 
um, the way that they were played in Miami, I'm not entirely keen on that. I didn't see Jacoby get that much pressured on, and that kind of scares me. Uh, this is an improved offensive line in the Los Angeles Chargers, so there should be better blocking at this point. So with, uh, I still think it's a suspect secondary in Las Vegas. I don't know how they're going to be able to stop both Keenan and Mike Williams going up and down the field on them. I don't know how that's going to be stopped at all, to be honest. The other side of the ball, Derwin James is there and healthy. That's a massive weapon that can elim- that can possibly eliminate Darren Waller. So what happens to this team when Darren Waller is not going to be, you know, 100% because Derwin James is there. He did a good job on Kelsey. You know, Kelsey got his garbage 109 yards or whatever. He was locked for the most part against um, Darren James as a beast. So with that said, with Darren, Darren, uh, Darren Waller at least slow down, I like the Chargers here too. One more game, unfortunately. At least this will be fast, though. For the first time in my years of watching New England Patriots football, this Sunday night will be the first time where I am not excited to see New England Patriots football. Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be hosting, not hosting, they will be visiting the New England Patriots Sunday Night Football. Tom Brady's coming home. Uh, Buccaneers are favored by seven. Surprised. There'll be more. Uh, the over and under is 49. That's also a surprise. Like, maybe they, you think they smell like a beating? Because 49 is a lot. <laughs> go ahead. I have something that's going to sound a little controversial, but go ahead. It's sad. Because after watching the Saints game, I told many Patriot fans that was around with us, I told Juan and Raul and Alex and them the same thing. We're going to get our asses beat. And it's I it hurts to say that because I love this team so much. We're going to get our asses beat really badly. And it's like, it couldn't have been more tailor-made for Tom Brady to not only Break the um, passing yards, passing yards um, record in in Foxborough. Not only that, it, I think it'll be hilarious if he if he breaks the record with Gronk or breaks the record with, with, with uh, Antonio Brown. That's not what I don't care about. about that would be, like, be, be hilarious. That'd be hilarious. It'd be fitting. It'd be fitting. And it's like, did it have to come to this? That did it have to come to this? This team, the team that I've watched. The last three weeks, just not convinced, not convincing, not convincing. It's a nerd. I'm, it's like, how are you not? Gonna, despite Tampa Bay's secondary being being um thin, does it say lack of a better word? How are you going to expose it if you're not going to let Matt Jones throw the ball up the field? So how is that going to work, Josh McDaniels? So Josh McDaniels, I want to ask you a question. I, I challenge you, Josh McDaniels. What exotic? play calling were you going to have for this game now I have to ask you this question Josh McDaniels were you the head mastermind that that, that ran this offense for all, this, for all these years or did Tom Brady make you a household name uh, offensive coordinator that has gotten head coaching jobs year after year was it Tom Brady was it Tom Brady that made you who you are right now I don't know you show me I think yes he did because I don't think you're that good anyway but Make me a believer, Josh McDaniels. Make me a believer. Make me believe that you actually know what you're doing. And, hey, get us a win out there. Help us move the offense and make us run. And, and Belichick, too. But if Belichick is the best coach in the world, we know this already. All right? The media has been on your ass. <laughs> I'm sorry I have to say it. It's been on your ass for the last, for the, for the last year and change. They've been on you. Now that Brady's coming back, they're saying, oh, um, you need a Brady to to, to, to succeed, or black or vice versa. Are you gonna show them? Are you gonna show them that yo that you really this this is what you do here? That you're the the, the big mastermind. I think you are the big mastermind, head coaching wise. Best head coach, best head coach in football, in in, in the history of football. Me personally, just show, show me, show me that, show me that y'all care, show me that y'all want this, because what I seen you last week, you show me, show me that. Yeah, not only do I not want it, but it feels like you're gonna let there and come over there and just take you to task. No Vaseline. That's that's what I seen. Just make it a game. But I do think we're gonna get our asses beat. Because I just don't know. 
And I was, I'm just being honest. Quiet, buddy. Tampa's gonna win. Tampa's gonna cover. But it's gonna take a while. I think Belichick has this game circled in his calendar all year long. I think they are going to put up a fight. It's just going to take a while to really lose out on this game. It is no way in hell that Tampa's going to lose this game. It's impossible. The way this, this offensive line is playing, oh, ho, 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 no, 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 no. The game is definitely going to go under. I think it's at 49. This is probably one of the easier under games I've ever seen. This game is not going to be combined. No. I believe that New England is going to play solid, solid defense on Tom. And it's going to be one of the worst games I think he's going to play all season. This means it's going to be, like, disgusting. That's how good he's been. But this is going to be one of those. Remember Peyton in 2013? His worst game was against New England. Mm-hmm. Then again, the snow helped. Then he went through, like, 100 yards. It's not going to be that bad. But... It was by far the worst game he's played out of every game he's played. I think that's going to happen to Tom here. It's going to be the worst game he plays all season down the line when mm-hmm. you get to week 18. And we're going to see Tom was like 56, 100 yards and like 58 touchdowns or whatever. But this is going to be the game. Well, not 58 touchdowns now because he didn't throw any last week. But, right? I think so. But this is going to be the game that people are going to look forward to circling. Like, damn, he really didn't play this well, huh? I think... Belch is going to have the circle, and it's going to be just a straight eagle thing. If it's going to be any game, I'm going to put a perfect defensive game plan. It's going to be this one. But we're, this is going to lose, though. <clears throat> but it's, they're going to cover. It's seven. They're going to cover. All oh, I just ask, just don't lay down. I, I, they're not going to lay Don't down. lay down. I don't think they're going to lay down. I, 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 do you, do I feel that I'm I'm overreacting, saying they're gonna get our asses beat? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna stand by that because of how we seen them play. All right, but whatever. <laughs> I just I just want this this just get it over with. Yeah, like if it happens, it is. What I'm not gonna care because I it that. should happen. I just don't think it is. But the losses are coming though. Yeah, it's so gonna the come. Patriots is gonna be what was it one and one and three. One and three, yeah, it's gonna be one and three, three and zero oh and three in Foxborough. I don't even remember the last time that happened. Oh, I probably wasn't born. <sighs> Not that I'm lying. It might have happened in two thousand. It might have been two thousand. But I was watching football then. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah, we're done. That's we're done it. Here. Yeah, that's it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We're on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Google Play Radio, Stitcher Play Radio, at Podcast Dynasty on Twitter. And if you didn't like that, you just go to the link tree so you won't hear my voice again, like saying that again. Oh, I forgot to say that. Damn. Yeah, link tree. <laughs> whatever, whatever. The point, I'm going to say it anyway. Make sure you join the Facebook group and go on join Instagram so you can be uh, up to date with our posting of our videos and stuff like that and our content. Be a part of the conversation. Remember that on Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern time will be the deadline for you to get your picks in. We have, a, we have a lot of newcomers coming in the last few weeks, so we're starting to pick up more traction. This Remember, it has to be on that specific post, and you must be part of the group. Yes. If you're not part of the group, I don't X. Luckily, the new people that have signed up are part of the group, which is great, perfect, and first of all, welcome. welcome. Oh, yeah, and like share and subscribe and stuff. Like, help us, man. Like, what the fudge? I'm telling you, this is your podcast. You know what I'm saying? It's going to get really fun soon. Um, we have a lot of things in the works. We gotta put it out there, put it together. But we really look forward to hearing from you mm-hmm. on the first quarter of the season ending next week. Technically, the first quarter of the season ending. Yep. Other than that, peace, love, and applesauce. See you soon, and let's go, Patriots. I'm gonna get that bite. The f out of here. Yes, let's go. Peace out. <laughs>